Hi, this is Jan Hibbert from Log Cabin Leather for another session of my Workshop Wednesday series. Um, just a minute ago, again, the camera cut out or whatever. It died right in the middle of it. So, again, I'm having glitches with the uh, live presentations. I don't know what the deal is. They were working fine, and now all of a sudden I have all these issues with it. So I apologize for that. Again, this is Jan Hibbert, Log Cabin Leather. This is another session of my Workshop Wednesday series. This whole month I've been talking about leather, leather butterfly jewelry and how I make um, the intricate little butterfly shapes on these earrings and how they're cut out, which, of course, I couldn't cut out by hand, not in this tiny size because that whole piece is small and a quarter, um, the little flower. Um, so I've talked about that in some of my other sessions. Um, I also, this week in my Maker Monday session, I was talking about which butterflies I have um, are based on real butterflies and which are based on um, <clears throat> made-up colors. I do have some of each because, again, these bu butterfly things appeal to people of all ages. And, again, you know, right down to little girls. And, and this set includes not only earrings but also hair pieces. So those can be for, you know, girls as well as, you know. Adults. Um, so I, you know, talked the other day about which ones are real. And again, the lighting here is not real great. Um, I'm usually not in this part of the, my workshop, but this is where um, I paint my things. So this is where I was going to talk today. So I don't know. Maybe my thought was better over here. And again, this is where I died a little bit ago. Um, you know, so some are based on realistic butterflies. This is actually based on real butterfly. For the bright colors like that. Um, monarch butterfly, Luna moth, one I have here, Atlas moth. So now again, I started this video a little while ago and I cut out in the middle of it. I just showed how I did the color on that. So I just painted this a minute ago. And again, I realize this lighting is horrible here. Um, I just painted that a little bit ago. I put actually a finish on it, which I actually dipped it in the finish. Um, Again, I was a kindergarten teacher for many years, so little fine motor skill things I used to have these tweezers for. So now I use them for this. I actually dipped it in the container there and then, you know, sponge it off so it's not so... So now it's kind of damp. So now I'm going to mold it because if you notice, like this, the tails are molded. It's turned. It's twisted. Um, I have the hair streak here. Just, and again, you can see on the back it's kind of molded. So how I do that now... So now for the very tiny things, I'm going to use this tool, and this is exactly where I died last time, has a ball point on the end. For something larger like this, this butterfly, I'm going to use the ends of these, you know, that's something that's bigger. Um, so for the, again, basically, I'm just going to take it into the wing and push it in there a little bit so I can get it to squeeze the way I want. And I'm going to pinch the wings. And the same thing down here at the bottom, maybe a little bit. And now the wing has much more, more character than just the flat. That one, this one has a little more character to it. But that's basically how you mold it. And see, I hadn't been molding them all like that originally, not quite to that detail. So that's, again, I'm realizing you're not seeing that at all. So here's, again, so now the edges of that have kind of been rounded. Um, you can see on the little hair streak. So they are molded and shaped now. And then, again, the next step of that would be to add the jewelry components to them and things like that, which is what I'll be talking about next week for the finishing of these things. So they dipped in the dye, they molded like that. Um, sometimes they dipped again or, or painted um, in the instant of the, you know, it being attached to the flower. It's glued on with Gorilla Glue um, onto the center. But again, painting the little tiny things by hand can be quite challenging because they are just that tiny and Again, I apologize because the camera cut out in the middle before um, the paint. You know, it can be t hard cutting little tiny things. I do use some Sharpie markers at times, and that's what I had shown. I had done the edges 
like I said, the video cut out in the middle, so I'm not really sure whether I should show this again or whether it's just going to die. Um, the edges are on a lot of things are done with markers, not everything, but on a lot of things it is marker, and so I can just quickly. And this one, the white is what's done um, by hand on the atlas. There's white in a couple places. So I've shown this before, and like I said, I wasn't going to repeat the whole video, but I'm not sure what even happened to that one now. And then I do the white, or actually the body. This goes to OCD. And then if I need a finer marker, I have to do fine sharpie markers, and there's a little bit of that. And then the white. Which again, I you know, fairly fine brushes, not super, super tiny. I don't know what size it is. I don't pay much attention. Two slash zero, it says. I, I don't know if that means anything to anybody. A lot of times I use paint right out of the cover. And then this is just, and again, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just, I, I do steady my hand on the table. And again, painting doesn't bother me so much, but coloring with the Sharpie markers actually can bother me quite a bit if I'm doing like, like belts. Belts I do, that's another video I have that I did, I think the whole month of January might have been about belts. And um, so I talked about how I add the color to those. <coughs> and um, it's done with Sharpie marker. And that does, that bothers my hand, my arms after a bit. I get carpal tunnel and things like that. This, although I'm resting my hand on the table, for some reason, painting doesn't bother me as much. And so I just paint, you know, this is painted on. Paint it on, let it dry a little bit, and then I, again, dip it in the finish. And then in this one, again, that's all I need to do because the inside color of this particular Atlas Moth interior color here is actually the natural color of the leather. So I don't have to do a whole lot more painting on that. That's probably the easiest one. I have to paint out all of them. Today, that's I showed it because it was what I had cut out, to be quite honest. Um, and so forth, but with my new piece of equipment, I can go back and, you know, cut these. I just, have, you know, the sizing. So here's some of the Luna Moss in the little tiny sizes. So now those will go on our, actually, I think these go on this flower. That flower will be red, and those will go on it. This one I don't have a flower for yet, or the hair streak. Um, these are actually earrings, though. And again, those are about the size of a quarter. They're small, and the, you know, the detail with the, I mean, these are gorgeous. With the detail, the hair streak, it even has the the antennas and so forth. So I think those are absolutely just beautiful. Um, again, now, of course, little girls and stuff may not wear earrings and so forth. Um, the nice thing about them, though, if they do, is they're light as can be. Because they're made of leather, there's no weight to them at all. Um, so not like a lot of, especially bigger earrings for women who like to, the big earrings. Um, again, although none of these are really big, probably 50 cent piece. Um, some dangle longer maybe than others. But um, they're not heavy. They're not going to weigh down your ears. They're not going to stretch your holes out. And if you can't wear earrings, like me, because I'm allergic to metal, um, that's why I have the hair pieces, because of course I can wear those. And the stick style is very popular. Very 60s, 70s type thing. I'm dating myself a little bit now. Um, that people used to love. Very hard to find. Can hold a lot more hair um, than some of the clip ones. But of course, I make the clip style too because not everybody knows what to do with these. And the clips come in several, you know, three different sizes. So depending on what you have, um, they can be ordered in any size you want, though. Um, 
and again, for something like that, if you order it at a different size, I'm not going to, I'm going to charge you the regular price that I charge for that barrette, because it's easy as can be to make it a different size, and it would be the price of whatever it is with that clip. So like the largest clip I think is $20, the medium clip is 18 and I think the small clip, which is a 3 inch clip, and then the 2 inch clip is 3 inch clip, and then the 2 inch clip is 17 I think, and the stick ones are 16. So again, you know, you can get whichever kind you want to go with, you know, whatever you need, and then the earrings match. Um, you can buy them separately, buy them together. But again, I can make things in different sizes if you if you really like something, but you want it in different size. Um, I know I probably shouldn't say that because very often I give people more choices than I should, and that makes it harder for them, the decision process, which is my downfall, I think, a lot of times. Because I am having such a blast making this stuff, I could just keep going forever and ever and ever. Um, so now that brings me to my, my next um, topic, which is... Um, other events. Um, I'm doing, trying to do more and more live events here on Facebook, although as we see Facebook is not always cooperating with me, so I'm not sure how well this is going to be. Like I said, the lighting here is horrible today, so um, I'll try not to film from this section too much anymore. Um, but again, I go live Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Monday is my Maker Monday series where I tell the stories kind of behind the production. Each month I have a, a new theme. So this month is all about the butterfly jewelry. So I'm talking about how I make it, how it's created, where I got my designs from, where I got the ideas for the colors from. was what I was talking about this week. So how I'm coloring them. Then on Saturday I'll highlight some more of the items particular from this collection. Um, I'm also thinking of doing it, so those are the three live events I have, Maker Monday, Workshop Wednesday, Spotlight Saturday. Um, I'd love to know what time to post them. I'm gonna, I was trying to do a poll and that didn't seem to work. I mean, there was a thing, tab to set up a poll, but it didn't let me post it, so I'm not sure there. Um, what time's the best time that, you know, you're most likely to watch a live video, because I also want to start doing something called a trunk show, where it's going to be a live sale right here on Facebook. And you will be able to, again, if you want something, everything that I, you know, have for sale will be numbered. And if you want something, you say, I want number, you know, 22, and you'd say sold right in the comments. And then that piece would be saved for you. And, you know, then I'd send you an invoice for it. And, you know, I'll go into details on it. That would be called the trunk show. Um, that's something I think I'm going to be starting or going to be trying because, um, I can't do any live events. Most of my live events now, my, I had a show at the end of June, Rhinebeck, New York, the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. Um, that show has already been canceled, although I have one here in New Hampshire in Meredith that's scheduled for Memorial Day weekend, which is, of course, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. That one has not been canceled yet. I honestly think it should be um, in light of everything, in light of, you know, a lot of vendors of my age are older and... You know, so it's a health risk, and especially to be exposed to people, and I'm not sure how many people would come, because a lot of those fairs are out-of-staters. So if anybody watches this and you live in my area, you know, and you'd consider coming to, you know, I'd love to know your opinion on it. Yeah, the show is a week and a half away, and they haven't um, determined whether they're even having it or not, which I think is, you know, a little tough for the vendors. My show in March, the Made in New Hampshire Expo, um, was three days from starting when the, you know, the governor closed down the state and, and issued the stay-at-home orders. And I'm not saying that I'm against that. I'm actually glad they did it. Um, but it does hurt my income. So I'm going to try these trunk shows to try to get some online sales um, and things like that. So that, um, But again, I'm having glitches with the face, Facebook working, as you can see. So I'm not sure where I'm going to be going with this because obviously if I can't get the cameras to work and things... Um, I'm going to have issues with this, so we'll have to see what happens. But in any event, my Spotlight Saturday series for this week is scheduled for noontime. I'll be highlighting some other of the butterfly earrings and the, you know, the Mayflowers collection of the ones where the butterflies are on the flower. And then, and again, that's, I should be holding them up so you can see. And again, I can't wear earrings, so I apologize for that. Um, and then the other ones just have uh, just the butterfly without the flower, other April showers earrings. 
So in any event, that will be Spotlight Saturday, where I highlight some of the items for that event. Um, again, I mentioned about the shows, and I'm not sure. I have tried to update on my website, um, which again is logcabinloverbyjan.com. Also, the best way to keep up on what I'm doing is to join my email, right on my Facebook page, which is Log Cabin Leather by Jan. Um, there's a link, and you can join live. Um, you can click on that to join my email, and then you'll get a 20% discount on an order if you place it. But you also get, you know, updates on when I'm doing live events and things like that. Um, so thank you very much for um, joining me today. Um, this is Jan Hibbard once again from Log Cabin Leather. This is another session of my Workshop Wednesday series where I talked about how I color the, these beautiful butterfly pieces for my earrings. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, that's all I have to say for now. I think that did work this time without stopping in the middle, so I'm not really sure what happened the last time. But thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Um, bye.